Hello everyone, Denki the Lustrous Luxio at your service. Welcome to episode 11 of my Let's Play of Ocarina of Time Master Quest in Japanese. In this episode, we will be doing Fire Temple. I hope you enjoy it. So, we'll just head to the Death Mountain Crater and get our way inside. first. There's a like life ready to greet us. <laughs> yep, we got him. Yeah, it's kind of cool that we, you know, like, I could have, I should have saved the jump slash damage first, but oh well. Alright, this chest. Is this the blue P? Okay, let's see what we can do now. Oops. Looks like we're playing the modified version of the music that isn't the original version, but that's okay. I'm used to playing this version anyway. So, unlit torches? I well, definitely want to use Din's fire to light them all. Makes sense that we use Din's fire in the fire temple, but only in Master Quest is this required. Okay, now we can go into this room. And here's Darunia. He's gonna try to seal off the boss, which we will get to at the end of this video. Thankfully, our Goron Tunic prevents us from taking too much damage from it. Alright, we can just quick shot over here. Some of these crates may have stuff inside. For example, there's an unlit torch right there. So we have to get a little bit creative with where we light this, because there's a torch over there too. So we need to use Din's fire to light these two, and then shoot an arrow through the lit torch to light the other torch. Requires some good placement and precision and being quick. Just like that, and that opens that door. The gate. Forgive my cat if he starts making noise. Anyway, here's the first small key of the dungeon. One of the big differences between this and the original is the fact that the number of small keys has been reduced from the original. There were eight in the original version of this dungeon, but the Master Quest only has five, which is 37.5% less. Wait, here comes my cat. He recently just threw up on my kitchen floor, so I kind of feel bad for him. Anyway, here's our Stalfos again. Thankfully, Big Goron Sword lets us two-shot him. 
It's pretty easy right there. The same thing cannot be said for this next room, however. We first gotta get rid of these stupid floor tiles flying at us. If so if you struggle with this room, try putting fairies in these bottles. There are some fairies in these in these pots. I'm gonna have at least two just to be absolutely sure I don't worry about dying, but you may definitely want to bring at least two. This game isn't really that hard. Even if you're playing the Master Quest version, it's still it's not that it's not that hard. But requiring you may want to get you may want to keep at least a few fairies on you. The reason I was grabbing these fairies here is because in this room the only thing I haven't touched is this enemy right here. Now this frightening thing is called an iron knuckle and this thing does not play around. If you get hit, you lose four hearts. Quite brutal. But the big golden sword makes us to make very quick work of him. It's really nice to have that in stock. It's such an easy fight in this regard. I did that without any taking any damage. And if you're playing the Master Quest version, you take eight hearts from a hit. Now I need to do with yet yeah, another mini boss. This is the Flare Dancer. This one's easy though. So this is one of the few um, enemies that actually takes less damage from the Big Goron Sword than the Master Sword. So that's why I switched to it here. Yeah, this is probably one of the easier mini bosses as well. Especially when we come to fight the second one later. There we go. We also drop some bombs. How nice. Alright. Another difference between this version and the original is that, well, let's just let this chest speak for itself. We get the Megaton Hammer early, rather than halfway through. We're gonna need this for the remainder of the dungeon. Actually, once I do this room... Oops, I went to go the other way. You'll need the Megaton Hammer to hit rusty switches, like this one. And this is the map chest, if I remember right. Mm hmm. It is. Okay. Before we go any further, I want to quickly use this Megaton Hammer and head straight back to Death Mountain Crater. We can just we can just play a. Uh, Ocarina to get there quickly. Bolero. That way we don't have to climb all the way up the ladder, which would take an eternity. So if we go this way... Shut up. The crowd stab brokenness can be extended to the hammer as well. Let's check this out. Yeah, my sword stab can hold the properties of Megaton Hammer as well. And right here is another great fairy fountain. Here we'll get a very important upgrade. This is the second to last Great Fairy Fountain in the game. 
Well, third to last, because there's one at the very, very end. But this is this one provides arguably the most important one for this part of the game. Now we have double the magic meter. So we're much more free to practice using it as much as we want. We'll definitely take advantage of this for sure. Actually, I can do the same thing again. That's probably just as fast going normal way, but I might as well do it like this to avoid one extra transition. Now that we have double magic, we can do a lot more with it. All right. Let's go back where we were going. I like doing that to get down faster. So the reason I went to the side is because of that firewall right there. Kind of a mean thing to do. Use the hammer to break this open. Okay. This is the... A big room, yeah. So we can start by going in here. A rusty switch reveals a gold sculptula. This is another one of those cases where we need to light a torch and use the flame to light an arrow on the other side of the room. In this case, it's the one right outside the door down there. So we have to quickly aim and hit that one. That opens that door. Now getting up there is another story. A whole nother story. I think it's another story. Can I even hit it? I don't know if I can. Yeah, because, like, what I'm thinking is that I thought I needed to do Water Temple first, so I thought you couldn't reach that without Long Shot. Forgive me if I'm wrong. But I think I do need to... I think I do need that thing in order to get up there, as far as I'm aware. Because I don't think doing Scarecrow Song will do anything. Normal Song of Time, like the original version. I could try both and see what happens, but I'm not expecting things to go smoothly. Yeah, that did nothing. And this does nothing too, I think. Yeah. So, pray tell. You see, when I first played through this, I thought I needed long shot to reach that thing. And it looks like I might be right again. I might be right about this. Cause I don't know if this is enough to reach that from here. Even then the top of the torch doesn't have to doesn't have the hitbox and it's kinda of hard to see. See the invisible wall too. Yep, 
Yeah, I think I need long shot to do this. So, what gives? What gives exactly? As far as I'm aware, I think long shot is required to reach that. Because as far as I know, that's the only way up. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I don't think I can actually finish the rest of this dungeon in this part. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I can. Because that just sinks down instead of going up. I can't ride the other one, it's too far away. I didn't expect this episode to actually go wrong, because... I thought that you were supposed to play it in this order, but apparently not. The reason I'm saying this now, now is because, you see, the boss key is up there, so... Unless I have long shot, I can't actually finish this dungeon in one go. That is kind of bad, because I'm already this far in, and I don't want to waste much time. I think it might be better just to do Water Temple instead, because I don't see any other way around this. I think we need to go to water. It's really sad that this episode is suddenly taking a different turn. But I see no other way around. Talk about a train wreck. There's also another thing I can get after Water Temple that would help immensely. So, I believe that in Master Quest, what you're supposed to do is do Water Temple first before coming back to fire. Because I don't see it any other way. So I'm sorry for those who were expecting this episode to be all about the Fire Temple, but it now has to take a different twist. I'll do all of Water Temple in this episode to make it last longer, as well as give a good reality check and give it a pretty good title for it. You'll probably... It is a bit of an inside joke what I'm titling this episode now, but um, for those of you who do get it, let me know in the comments if you understand the reference. So, yeah, let's do Water instead. And unfortunately, Water Temple MQ is my second least favorite MQ dungeon. So, I might not be as excited about doing this as most people would be. The original Water Temple is actually one of my favorites. I'd put it in A tier. But Master Quest Water Temple is a whole nother animal for multitudes of reasons. The original is very open-ended, and you could do whatever you wanted provided you had the means to go there with that water level. In MQ, however, this half the, the dungeon is locked behind these gates. And the only way to open them is to get them from one specific side or the other. So get ready for a lot of time in this episode spent pausing and unpausing just to keep moving around. I hate to have to do it this way, but... You know what? I definitely feel like this episode is a much, much clearer way to call this title. But yeah, Water MQ is going to be a beast for me because... I did not have much fun the first time around, and knowing everything now doesn't make things any better here, unfortunately. It still doesn't change my opinion on it. But hey! Here's Adult Rudo! And I would decide I'd take off the boots because this cutscene is a lot funnier when I'm just swimming into the ceiling. It's pretty funny. We'll follow after her. She's pretty much saying that, where have you been all this time? I'm the one who's supposed to marry you. Well, there's not, not, now's not the time to talk about love. But yeah, we're going to have to help her figure out the rest of this place. She's going to disappear behind me. Then she just conveniently disappears out of the screen. 
So we're gonna need to get Din's Fire once again. Because Din's Fire is needed to go through all of this dungeon as well. I do like how MQ forced you to use use some of the seemingly useless items more often, but it still does lead to some pretty annoying uses of them for puzzles. In this case, we have to use Dense Fire to light all four torches in this room at once. This is not the only place where we have to do it like this. Oh, and by the way, if you thought two stuff else was fun, let's try three! Actually, to be fair, the strategy is largely the same as before. Just focus on one at a time and not Z-target them. Oh, oops. I accidentally did that. Didn't mean to do that. I thought I had hookshot on the left C because it was a habit. Also, this is the first case where we have to hit random wall glyphs to do things to happen. So yeah, we make this chest appear. And there's the map for Water Temple. <sighs> Just changing the water level. Unlike the original version of this dungeon, yeah, MQ Water is actually a just about as linear as it gets. You have to do things in a very specific order, or else you won't make it very far. Also, they changed where the torch was. Still, it doesn't change the puzzle that much, but the fact you had to find a different place to stand to hit both of these is a little bit is an interesting choice, I guess. Is this guy? The Zelfos. Chest appears. We hit this random wall glyph. Red Rupee comes out. And now, just like with fire tiles I tried to show you before, you actually get this dungeon's big item very early. It's not this room, but it's the one after this that we get the big item for the dungeon. We get it a lot earlier. So now we have the map and the compass. We can go towards the center room. I believe we can do the center. Just making sure I'm not missing. Yeah, we go to the center room. There's no other place to go. We can at least raise the water to the middle here by going up here. Change the water level, come back to the room we came from, and go to that middle room on the east side. That's where we just came from. Just because we have the compass on the map doesn't mean this dungeon is easy. <laughs> no, that's definitely not the case here. It's still frustrating to deal with it, even if you do have the map, because the, the map only shows a very basic shape outline of the rooms. It has nothing to do with the actual shape of, like, where the things are. Objects and stuff. Let's go ahead and take the boots off and float up. Oh yeah, this lovely blue color. Alright, here we are. By hitting this wall glyph with the hookshot, we make another chest appear. And with this, we now have all the big chests that are not the boss key. Welcome to my favorite item in this game. It's just too bad it's part of one of my least favorite dungeons. The reason I couldn't finish Fire Temple, the long shot. Or as Japanese version says it, long hook. Now that we have the long shot, we can do a lot more things. Like finish the rest of this dungeon, for instance. So we can just go back to that center pillar room again. Because the water is in the is in the middle, we can just float up to the middle and head and go down the eastern side. Because we need to go this way. We need to head to the east side to grab something to be able to reach the west side of this floor. 
Now we come to the reason why we needed to do this thing first, because without long shot, this next room would not be doable. Well, maybe it is, but I just try to get the long shot down first. All right, we're gonna grab this box. Take it with us. So we have to be very careful with this jump, because if we mess up and get just the wrong place, we'll lose the box, have to come back to try it again. So let's hope I get this right first try. Okay. By bringing this box with us, we can take it to this blue switch to keep it weighed down. Without long shot, this room would not be possible, and you'll see why in just a moment. Also, Lizalfa's no big difference here. There's a magic drop. This crate has a switch that summons a little square thing we can pillar up. And if we use the long shot, we can reach the top of this room. One of the gold sculptures is in one of these crates. Looks like it's this one. Yep. Alright. And then we can change the water to go back to the top from here. Now if we head to the center room, from the west side it looks like, or the north side, is there nothing? Okay, we'll have to sink down a level. Oh look at that, there's also a switch to the wet to the south side there too. We can't do much there yet, so let's just worry about going to the middle room first. If we take off our boots and float to the top. I also need to, I also want to put Din's fire on a C button, because this is the second case where you need to use Din's fire to make progress. I also need an ocarina. We go up here. Playing Song of Time. This block comes down that we can now stand on. And by using Din's fire in the center, we can hit all the four torches in this room. And that opens the gate down below. So now we just need to sink our way down again. Go down here. This is the room where one of the small keys was hidden in the original. This room does also have a small key, but it's in a very different spot, a different way you get to go about it. There's these sinking platforms, as you can see here, by standing on them, but these ones can't be stood upon. So what we need to do is to break these crates to reveal some things. Like, there's a crystal switch in that. We stand on this and that. We can move up and open this switch. Crystal switch hidden inside this, the box. Now we're just going over here. Taking off her boots and floating up. There's a chest that appears when we hit the wall glyph with the hook shot. This chest, there's the first small key. So, this is the dungeon that has the least amount of small keys. 
It ties with Vanilla Ganon's castle for, with only having two small keys in the entire dungeon. By removing four of the small keys, it forces a large pattern of linearity in this dungeon. It really hurts for the player having to go through it like this. But them's the breaks. With our key here, we can head to the west. So this room is very different from the original as well. There's a bunch of hookshotable targets. Well, there would be if we had a way to summon them in. So this looks pretty tricky, because, like, it's too far away to reach that from here. So, where may it be to open the rest of it? Well, if you turn yourself around and look up here... Hey, there you are! But it's not over yet. There's also a bunch... Most of these go around, but there's only two specific ones that you want to go for. By hitting this one here... We can stand on top of this, which allows us to use it again to hit this wall glyph. Which raises this platform to let us go into the next room. So yeah, if that wasn't a doozy, I don't know what is. Good luck figuring that one out by yourself. Oh yeah, let's fight three more Stalfos, because that was so much fun the first time. It was so much fun the first time. Okay. We can hook shot up to this platform again. And we should be able to reach this one from here. Yes. Right at the very reach of our long shot range. All right. Now for everyone's favorite mini-boss. I like to see it as an excuse to use some cheese tactics to win. Here it is, Dark Link. This guy is actually really easy if you know what you're doing. But if you don't, he can be quite annoying. I like to throw Deco Nuts and Big Goron slash them like that. Easy! <laughs> that was a lot easier than expected because I could just do that. Yeah, the big one sword and nut strategy is just so OP. Yeah, another wall glyph. Alright, we can go to the, the river room. There's two ways we can go through it. Either we can swim through it and find the right place to climb, or, as I like to do it to be more fun and technical, just hook, just long shot from platform to platform. This is more fun, honestly. There's also a gold sculpture up there in the ceiling. Totally fun, isn't it? Alright, now we're in this room. Go up here, you can break these crates. Hit the wall glyph. Magic appear. It's like, hmm, what does this want us to do? Well, I just saw two torches over there, so let's just use Din's fire to light them. Yeah. 
This is looking like my longest episode yet at this rate, because I tried to do some of fire, but ended up not being able to do that, so I figured I may as well just do the rest of water here. Okay. Once again, we need to use Din's fire somewhere. But, let's just hit the switch from over here while we're standing on top of this thing. This little geyser. By using Din's fire, right here at this time. Lights the torches, and lets us reach the boss key chest. Alright, boss key chest. So, surprisingly, we could go fight the boss now if we really wanted to. The only reason to stick around would be to get the remaining gold sculptulas. We have what we need to take on the boss. The boss key, water at the top, and long shot. That's all we really need. We technically could have gotten here as well without, without that. But this is important now because we can now step on this switch to open all of the gates that were closed previously. So the game want- it's like the game wants us to stay here to keep doing more things. The only direction we can't do anything in is south because we need another item that we cannot get at this moment in time. We could go ahead and do that when we're done with this area. Instead... Let's head to the north. Actually, wait. Hold that thought. I want the water to be in the middle so that I can do something to the south. Which I mentioned earlier that now that the gates are open, we can now do this. We'll have to play Zola Zola by in two more places though. That means we will have to go through all of this TDM and go through the whole place again, but. But yeah. The reason why this dungeon really isn't that fun for me isn't it's not it's not just the the boot switching thing. It's just that I think some of this design is like it's communicated so poorly to the player that it it just assumes that you really have to think so hard just to figure out what to do. Like who would have guessed that just hitting a random wall glyph with a hook shot would make a chest appear? It's not something that the average player would often think about. We specifically need the water in the middle so that we can head to the south side. Yeah, this episode is a lot longer than I expected. We're already pushing 38 minutes, and we're definitely nowhere near finished yet either, sad, sad to say. Water in the middle. All right, let's go to the south side. By standing on this switch, we open the gate. So we just kill the Skulltula. And here's the token. It's at this point that I would like to leave the dungeon and come back so I can get another Skulltula. Before we do that, let's put the water back at the top. To reach that, we can just play this over here.
This is definitely feeling like the 2019 Marvel League from the Oceanics perspective. So if we just leave this place... In order to get the last two gold scotulas, we need to go this way anyway. You'll see why once we get in there. A lot of back walking needed here. We can also take a bit of time to just use the long shot to get on top of this tree. Oops. Oops. That was a bad place to land. There's a gold sculpture right here. You may be thinking that I need to beat the dungeon to raise the water to reach this area. But, the thing is, you don't have to. Here's the fire arrow. We actually don't need to finish the dungeon and get the fire arrows. We can get it as soon as we have long shot. Why? Because... Our old friend Pierre is waiting for us just a long shot over to him. Yep. Yep. A scarecrow spawns here. Letting us reach fire arrows early. Fire arrows also makes the fire temple easier as well. So you don't have to waste as much time just quickly doing quick shots. With them to light unlit torches. And you'll see that happen when I go back to fire in the next episode. As it stands now, though, we now have what we need to fully complete the rest of Water Temple, because Fire Arrows is required for one of the Gold Sculptulas that we will now get. Oops. Come on. Alright. Now, it, remain it remains to be seen if the door the gate at the bottom of this floor still closed, because if it is, I will need to go back through the river room again. But if it's open, then we're good to go. Looks like it's open, so we can keep going. So let's just go this way. swim this way. Let's get up here. Once again, our old friend Pierre can help out. How about more Stealthos? Isn't that just fun? Isn't that just fun? It seems so much fun, doesn't it? I'm just like, no. I don't think it's fun at all. all right, we needed fire arrows to light these torches, because without them, it would be impossible. Because Din's fire does not reach. We gotta be quick with our shots, though. If we hit just above them... Alright, that opens the gate, which reveals this room.
Scotula in the ceiling. All right. So if you look at the map here, we can see what we may be missing. Is there only one? Maybe there was one, but... So now we need to head to the north. The north side of the central room, where we can now do the next set of puzzles to get the last gold sculpture left for the dungeon. After that, we can go by, beat the boss, and then we can call it for this episode. Forgive me for the sheer length of this beast, but sometimes you just can't do much about it. At least we don't have to worry about where the water is this time, because once it's at the top, we don't need to lower it ever again. We can just go to the north side so we can go to the next room. All right. So, if you don't, if you're worried about your magic usage, then you could go grab a green potion if you want to. But I think I've got what it takes to get the rest. I'm gonna switch out of boots again. Okay, here's this room. Don't forget to call your old scarecrow friend. He is here for you. Alright, let's switch to iron boots and get through this area. So this is where the boss key normally is. Hello again! <laughs> So much fun the first three times. Why not throw in a fourth Stalthos fight? That means you have to kill nine to fully explore this dungeon. That is a lot of... That is a lot. Hey! There's the other key. Only two, but... What can you do? <laughs> so much pausing and unpausing. It's kind of crazy how that works out. Yeah, this dungeon is a is a train wreck, to say the least. We need to go this way. But the annoyingness of these puzzles is not done yet. We now have to light all of these torches in rapid succession. We have to be very quick about it. There's one on each of these sides, plus one here. So what I want to do is to stand on... Th what we want to do is stand on top of this back one. Hit the crystal switch with our long shot. Have Din's fire ready. Use Din's fire to light two of the torches. The three of the four torches. And use fire arrows to light the fourth. That opens the door to the next room. Yeah, totally not fun, is it? And now the door is locked. There's a lot of Dodongos in the water temple. That doesn't seem right. That just doesn't seem right at all, does it? Thankfully, one hit with the Big Wan Sword is enough to kill them. So we can make short work of them easily. Doesn't matter if we get burned. Okay, that's all six of them killed. We're now free to go through this door. All right. There's another sculpture light here. Okay. Now we can save warp and go to the boss. Let's go fight the boss. And oh boy, is it one. 
But yeah, you can see why Water Temple can be pretty frustrating expecting so much of the player. This is definitely not a fun episode to make, that's for sure. Especially with what I thought was going to be smooth sailing turned into something very wet. And a very choppy sea. Well, that doesn't seem annoying at all. The spikes are moving too fast. How are you supposed to get up there, then? Well, we'll need to hit, use a bow, the bow, to hit the switch. Then we can long shot up to the top of the room. So... You don't necessarily need the boss key to fight the boss, because you can do something a little bit like along the lines of this. <laughs> Isn't that just cheesy? Okay. This is Morpha. Thankfully, with the big Gohan sword, he's really not a big threat. You'll see why in just a moment. All right, here's Morpha. I'll make quick work of him, though. Get over here! Easiest fight ever in that case. You can see a good reason why I grabbed the big Goron sword. It makes such quick work of all of these bosses. It's like, they may as well not even be a challenge. So yeah, that was definitely a dungeon, and it was not a fun one for my first playthrough, that's for sure. But we do have 15 hearts now. And let's just go ahead and do this cutscene, get the water medallion, and we can call it for today. That was exhausting. That was a good stretch. But yeah, I hope this beef of a video helps you understand just how much this game really confused me the first time around. It's nearly an hour long. And I wasn't expecting to do it this way because I thought I could just do fire. But yeah, it turns out that, yeah, I don't think it was designed that way. So we just did water first. Rudo's like, yeah, I don't think we're going to have to marry each other anymore. We can't do that because I have to protect the water temple. She's pretty much telling that, that Zelda's safe. She knows that Zelda's safe. Okay, so... When I look at this medallion, I can only think of one thing. Hold a Gatorade bottle and look at the bottom. Tell me that... This does not look exactly the same, because I think it does. Oh my goodness. That was a long one. I did some of fire, but it turns out that, yeah, I need to do water first. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that I need to do water first for long shot, just so I can get the boss key for fire temple. And speaking of Fire Temple, that will be in the next episode. But yeah, this episode was not a fun one to make. 
because it was a stupid realization that I came across the first time I played as well. While it was clever to use the torches to light some of the other ones, I do believe that you do need long shot from this dungeon to fully complete fire. I don't see any way around it. It was an unfortunate realization that I made. But yeah, that was not fun. The worst is yet to come in a later part, though. I mentioned that the Water Temple MQ is my second least favorite dungeon in the game, in terms of Master Quest layouts. You'll find out soon enough what my least favorite is. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, click the like button. For more episodes, to see them as they come out, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you again next time for episode 12, What a Hot Beat. And until next time, this has been Denki. Sayonara.